this is the first pass with a notch wedge. Already, you can see the difference at how much tighter this is closer to the edge of the mat with the notch wedge joint. And we're confining the material as we screen it in the wedge, which is, like I said, which is giving your open area support. And then the only area that we really have loose aggregate is in the vertical edge of the notch. And when we adjust the roller correctly, that's taking care of the loose aggregate in the vertical edge right. of the notch. It's the last portion of the key to get in joint density. If you look down the side, you can see the edge of the tire uh -huh. and you kind of line it up with the edge of the notch. So what we're trying to do is cut into the mat a little bit and we're trying to just confine that loose material in the right vertical. here. Yes, because that's where your joint's going to fail. Give you more pressure up against the joint. Yeah, yeah. Instead of having it fall off. Exactly. Line. That wedge like that, that's, that's beautiful. Right. That's beautiful. Yeah, it's yeah. cutting in better now. We made a little adjustment on the tracking and we cut the notch a little bit deeper and then we brought the outside up to try to give us a little bit smoother of a mat. So now that we're heated up, we're pulling a little bit smoother. We got everything adjusted a little bit cleaner. You can really see the definition. Oh, yeah. This loose material that's in this area, mm -hmm. the difference between the way this wedge looks and this material here, how loose it is, compared to how much tighter it is now and how defined that edge. That looks really, really good for base course. Oh, it yeah. looks, it even, looks really good. You, know, you can even see right now how defined we're creating that vertical notch and can find that loose aggregate. We're looking for consistent compaction across the full width of the mat. Not only the middle, but the edges too. Everybody's scared to get to the edge. This joint area gets neglected. It doesn't get the full coverage of compaction passes like we do in the rest of the mat. Yep. And that's the start of issue number one. But the thing about the wedge joint is, we created a 12 inch taper over there and a notch. What we've done now is we created the support for that open edge. So you can get out there now with these rollers and hit it. We can hit that outside edge the same as we hit the middle of the mat because now we have that wedge joint out there to support your pavement. So you always recommend tacking? Even base material, I like to tack because we'll still get some small voids in the wedge. If you spray it and we want it heavy, it'll actually help fill in those voids. Hey, it'll actually help you get density. Your physical joint would be the same location. It's just our wedge would be 12 inches further out. Further out. Normally, we're very, very close joint density to the middle of the mat. When we start to go thinner lift, a lot of times our joint densities actually end up being a few tenths higher than the middle of the mat. We usually see about a tenth to two tenths lower or so on base courses, but the wearing courses where we're a little bit thinner lift and the mix is a little bit tighter initially coming underneath the paver, that's when we really start yielding those higher joint density numbers. Hmm. The roller will actually give you an additional about a point to two points, maybe three points of density extra in the joint. How you pinch the joint? I teach the Maryland method. Okay. Because that's the best way to pinch right. a joint. When you go down through and, and pinch this all in one shot, you have the potential to push this material out of the joint. When you roll that 12 to 18 inches first, that stabilizes the material over top of the joint. That way when you come back, the material only has one place to go and that's down. The notch wedge joint is by far a superior joint because you increase the surface area. It provides support on that open edge and it has an interlocking factor when you put the next lane to it. I mean, not only does it build a better, stronger joint, it is it's, safer. It, it's safer, it's I way agree. safer. That's a nuclear density gauge. What they're actually doing is taking readings of the density, how much we've compacted the pavement. This joint was built like your normal, regular butt joint. They set the gauge down, 50-50 on the joint. This was a 133. Then we put the gauge offset, which would reflect how most states take a joint density core, about two to three inches off, straight down through the center of the joint. 1B was a 154.7. We took two other locations, 145.7, 154.8 would be the offset, 135.0, and then 147.7. The next joint over is where we built a notch wedge joint. 4A, which would be on the joint, was a 151, and then the offset was 158. Wow. Five, you're at 149, 50, 50, 156 offset, and then our last section, we were 150 on the joint, 153 offset. And without it, you were at 133, 135? Yeah. yeah. A lot of times when we go to check density numbers, the numbers are the numbers. When we cut a core on a regular butt joint and it's only 90% and you cut a core on a notch wedge joint and it's 94s or 95s, obviously we're getting better density in the joint and 
that's ultimately the goal. Your joints are your first failure. As a state DOT guy, if you can increase your lifespan of your pavement by five years by building a better joint, look at the money. They why? Would why would? Why would you not? It's like, like, if you can build a stronger joint, I mean that's the first part. Your roads split apart.